We're here at Sun and Fun 2022, and at the Zenith booth, we've got this. Uh, I've, I've been quoted as saying this is a wacky airplane, uh, and of course, this is a Stoll CH 750 Super Duty with uh, obviously the, the the Viking engine up here, and I'll have uh, Jan Egenfellner here with Viking and talk a little bit about this project. Well, uh, the airplane is not wacky. We we want to make sure to say that. <laughs> The airplane is a stock 750 Super Duty. The wackiness is from this uh, this landing gear that we came up with, and I, I think most people that do like stole competition, they basically put a different landing gear on it. We decided to do the same thing. Right. We're going to be competitive. We put a different landing gear, and, and it's not because the original gear is no good. For, for normal flying, the, the the gear is absolutely perfect, but for for playing around, having fun. Um, you know, showing off a little bit at the stole competitions. Uh, this gear was just fun to design, and uh, and we have 18 inches of travel on our shocks, and and we have a, a thought about you know this maybe being able to be a little bit more radical and drastic, and maybe stop a little sooner and take off a little bit uh, sooner. So that's that's the idea. And it's I'm guessing it's to help primarily on the landing, because you know we were right here at, in in Lakeland, Florida, in December, right. and you know you had the 44 foot takeoff and no wind condition like crazy you can't go much shorter than that i don't think well um let's take a look at this picture the the thought of doing the gear actually came about for the opposite the see how the tail is almost scraping and that's even with the extensions on the landing gear so we have the luxury of this giant fan up front because we we had a development done together with duke and we had a 95 inch propeller made and the limitation became being able to lower the tail more in order to to get that 44 foot number down even further but shoot you get that much rotation you're nearly a helicopter no uh, with the, it's, it's the idea, you know, it's the idea to, to, to actually levitate because it's, it's, right, as you see Steve Hendry, his tire goes around once and he's in the air, right, so yeah. the competition has become so right, fierce. Right that you can't but, afford to go forward. You yeah. have to go but, into the air immediately. But again, if you can if you can continue to do 40 foot takeoffs and no wind conditions, you can't go much shorter than that. And of course, every day is gonna be a little bit different conditions and, and so forth, but in a, yeah, in a I side think, by I side. Think, I think you're right. Zero wind, we're pretty close right now. So the gear, in, in yeah. other words, the gear's for about landings. Well, I, I get it. So you've got the rotation, you wanna be able to get that high rotation. But then again, talk about for the landing part. Now let's, that's where the shocks come in, isn't it? Yeah, let's talk about that because initially it seems like, um, well, how is it really gonna help on the landing? And there, there's, a, there's different phases of that and we're still in the testing of it. Um, if you picture this being collapsed the full 18 inches here and if you then took a snapshot of the airplane the nose wheel would be touching the fuselage would be down here and the, the tail skid would also be touching so the whole airplane would be planted on the ground nose wheel main gear and the tail skid in a in a positive attitude so now when you add full braking, you have the mass of the airplane going into the ground right. and less tendency of tipping over, which is uh, the same issue with nose wheel or tail dragger. You want yeah. to keep it from tipping over. So yeah, and it's great that you, it, obviously you put a lot of thought into this, just like you're explaining here, and that's yeah. great to see because, uh, you know, we, you know, I know in a lot of home-built aircraft, the landing gear is kind of an afterthought sometimes, and I know, I know my dad, Chris, you know, put a lot of thought into it, especially for slow-flying airplanes, yeah, at the same time, not, not doing a system for stole competitions either. It's, uh, right. you know, and, for everyday and flying. And then you have, you know, obviously the original gear is much less, less parched, simpler, maybe easier to maintain. Oh, it's, sure, it's pros sure. and cons right. to right. everything, and we Absolutely. all know that. Absolutely. Yeah. But, and this uh, is a competition type yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's definitely, you put a lot of thought. It'll be interesting to, to see now after Sun and Fun how you how you test it more and, and we'll look forward to seeing your videos on on doing that and, and we'll look forward to seeing you you know hopefully on the stole uh, show circuit because that would be awesome to see well I, I you know now when this is complete it's uh, the fun part is to go out there and uh, not just doing 
the test flying, the improving my own skills, but also learning about, you know, like like the off-road guys are doing with their shocks and yeah. tuning the shocks. And so the whole idea of spin is I have the right amount of compression on landing and then a, a very slow rebound exactly. of the shock. Yeah. And these are the things that I haven't really played yeah. with that we're gonna hit you know learn about and you know right here we're standing jan is standing underneath the elevator it gives you a, a, an a idea guy too. of the of the size of this airplane <laughs> it sits really high i see those those big red struts those are also ladders to get into the airplane aren't they <laughs> they are yeah yeah because that's the number one question you know how how do i get into this thing right <laughs> or how does anybody get he into does it? right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now it's open. So, so basically, yes, there's a built-in ladder. So show us how you get in here. And oh yeah, so it's nice. It's different than any other airplane. Yeah, yeah, nice. So you've actually got two steps. <laughs> you yeah. use the two steps to go up. Now talk a little bit about the wheels. You know, you used to have the big uh, Alaska Bush wheels on here. And okay. then uh, you've gone now with the smaller, and in, in comparison to the rest of the airplane, these wheels actually look pretty small. They're, they're, they're not small wheels. I don't know, like 21s or exactly, something or Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So they're, they're full-size wheels, but on, on this kind of monstrosity, and then you call it the monster, so I'm not feeling bad calling it a monstrosity. That's true. The wacky <laughs> but, monstrosity. Uh, but it, it has small feet, small wheels. So talk a little bit about that as opposed to the big uh, Alaska Bush wheels. Well, from the experience we've had, First of all, the Alaskan bush wheels are high quality, you know, choice if somebody wants right, to do sure, that. Sure, of course. Uh, I like them because they were like all one piece. You don't have a tube and all that stuff. Now, besides that, they're expensive. Uh, this isn't negative about right, it. Right, right, sure. But, but they are expensive. Um, and anything bigger than this for any kind of normal flying is for show. We're showing that we're having big wheels, right? Like on a truck. <laughs> right, in a truck, yeah. So then the, sh the show part of it is expensive. The show part of it is heavy. It's really heavy. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, the expense, or, or the, the big disadvantage of not being able to land on pavement. Right, You know, right, I right. did it for a few times, and it didn't take long before we started seeing thread in these tires. Yeah, and, yeah. and then they're shot. So I think a compromise, which, like we keep saying, is the, is the thing about airplanes, um, if the tires are big enough that you can roll comfortably over, um, you know, tundra and grass and, and some little rocks and stuff, then for most people, I think that's that's the right choice. Um, and uh, and yeah, uh, removing the big tires, removing the the aluminum bow um, type of landing gear, and adding this um, this weldment with the, you know, obviously it's not very thick wall tubing. Um, really didn't increase uh, the weight of the airplane. Right. It, it remains to be seen uh, what the speed disadvantage is going to be. We did put some streamlined tubing in here just to try to help with that. Um, of course, yeah. it's 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 not for speed. It's uh, it's for stall. But at the same time, it'd be nice to be able to go from from the competition home and all that you know right. in a, at a reasonable clip. But we'll see what the we'll see what it'll cruise at. Right. Yeah. That will we'll be excited to follow yeah. you and how how it goes. And uh, you know, one thing we we like following you because you know you, you do a lot of neat innovations on on take our the Zenith products and whether it's putting different engines on the front end. Uh, different gear systems on it you come up with the interesting innovation so we like to see that well thank you and you know that's really following in the spirit of, of experimental aircraft you know is uh, Zenith we supply you a good starting point with a good design but then customers take it and make it their own for their intended purposes yeah but I'd like to highlight that one more time is that it it's not necessary to change a Zenith airplane to make it to be perfect at stall um, and and this is this is Zenith this is Zenith this is Zenith this is yeah. all it, and it's, it's all your dad's right. creation. It, it's just like it's a common thing to to for stall guys to put a different landing. Exactly, and yeah. that's and that's part of the fun is making yeah. it your own and right. you know for for its intended purposes. And of course, the experimental category allows you to do that. Right. So that's one of the things we like to see. And the same on the engine side, instrument panel side. You know, this is a pretty unique airplane. Now, this particular Super Duty that was a first customer built one, correct? It was. Yeah. Because yeah, we, I remember, we supplied you a kit before we even had a kit for this airplane, pretty right. much, and uh, that you were. Able able to then put the the 195 uh, turbo on, on it and so, right. and so forth exactly it was uh, the first one put together with uh, with help from you yeah. guys so very you know. quickly let's just talk about your engine as well since obviously that's what you that's your expertise there yeah this has been on it for a few years now this is the Honda Accord engine 195 horsepower uh, some neat features about it is uh, obviously first you know it's a Honda 
and, and things that people might not be familiar with, usually turbochargers are hanging on pipes and stuff. And Honda has a unique system where the turbocharger is bolted directly to the cylinder head and the exhaust manifold is built into the cylinder head. So you get cooling of the turbocharger, you get cooling of, uh, of, of uh, the, the discharge that goes to the engine. So it's a very efficient turbocharger type of system. Of course, we run our gearbox here. Here's that propeller I talked about. Um, Vikings design in the sense that we wanted the long blades, the 95 inch propeller. Um, we went together with Duke to do the, the actual production of it. And um, that's that's been really, now with the airplane sitting even higher, we'd like to have an even longer propeller. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's a limit. To like I say, you're, you're going that transition with the high angle and the, and the big propeller to a helicopter nearly. Well, it? it's, it's all about what, <laughs> and what that, how many pounds of thrust are you generating? Absolutely. And how much yeah. can you blanket the airplane with the Exactly. Propeller? Well, yeah. thanks for taking a few minutes and sharing uh, things about it. That's probably one of the most photographed air, aircraft here at Sun and Fun, I think. Well, so. we're right over there and we keep looking over here. <laughs> There's always a crowd and oh, somebody yeah. wants to have a, their picture taken. So. Awesome. Thanks, Jan. Yeah.